salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And in verse 13, scripture says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And also in verse 17 of Romans chapter 10, scripture says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So about uh, five minutes ago, we had a heckler across the way, kitty corner, over closer to that sign that says St. Pete Pier over there. Did not like the message very much. Amazing, though, if we were to be having music out here, if we were to have rock and roll music, there would not be any problem. And that's what we find. There's people that come out here that are very... Rowdy, very loud, very obnoxious. And people seem to be okay with that. It's not really the the noise, as they would say it, or the loudness of whatever we're doing or whatever anybody's doing. It really has to do with the message that people just don't like. They can't tolerate that. That's unfortunate. But the message of the gospel goes on. For the glory of God. A truth, there can only be one truth. And I'm here to tell you today the ultimate source of truth that we have is the Word of God, the Bible. Amen. So, again, tonight, this is a special streaming that we're doing, Facebook Live. In addition to the audio and video recording that you can see in the camera there, we have found a product that gives us a better quality video and audio, but we have to record on that. So what we're going to do is take this video later and post it later to the EO Ministries webpage as well as the evangelismoutreach.com website. Hopefully we'll have that either posted tonight or tomorrow. So for now, we have this live streaming for the ministry. I want to let you know that we're out here ministering the gospel. If you would find in yourself to pray for us, we'd greatly appreciate it. We're having a good night tonight. But a lot of people out here for a Wednesday night. For Wednesday night, there's lots and lots of people out here. It was even busier a little bit earlier, maybe half an hour ago. This really is a happening place. And we're very thankful to be in such a position to be able to minister the gospel in the city of St. Petersburg. All for the glory of God. I'm still greatly amazed at the simplicity of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to use crafty, fancy words. We simply are faithful in preaching the simple truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's enough. No matter how much we share this, it never gets old. It never gets old. Preaching and teaching about the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was. One of the benefits of doing this as well is it reaffirms for ourselves the message of the gospel and what we believe and why we believe it. Saying, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. We find that he confesses that Jesus is the Son of God. He is ordained. God. There's Mike and Latimer over there. But Jesus to Mike's passing out tracks and interacting with people one on one. And Latimer is doing a sign evangelism. He's also our Spanish interpreter. Very interesting. We have a very small ministry compared to so many other ministries, but we have a very tight knit team that works very well together. 
So Latimer is in charge of the Spanish ministry. And when Spanish speaking people come up, he's the one that's designated to minister to them. We're very thankful for Latimer and for Mike and Andrew and for Tyler over there. He's our, Tyler is our event coordinator. A lot goes into every ministry night. Every time we go out and do something, whether it's street preaching or going to the abortion clinic or going to special events and conferences, he's the one that coordinates everything, gets everything together and gets all the hotel reservations going and makes sure that we have enough food, water to eat and drink. And he's the one that plans the trips and makes sure that we have everything in order. That's a very, very important function. We're very thankful for the work of Lord Tyler. Some more hecklers, some more mockers coming along. In verse 14, Jesus is referencing a, a time when the children of Israel. We really pity them and feel sad for them. And they have sinned against God. That their hearts are start cold to the things of God. And because of their disobedience, God brought punishment upon them. A plague of snakes that bit many of them.
But if we were to but look to Jesus Christ, the one who was raised up upon a cross, we look to him in repentance and faith, we can be saved from the plague of our sin. One of the most well-known verses of all time, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Out of God's great love for mankind, people of every nation, tribe, tongue, race, and ethnicity, out of God's great love for the world, he sent his only begotten Son into the world to make a way of salvation where there was no way. That all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But as I have called you tonight, this very same call that Jesus preached. Except a man be born again who cannot see the kingdom of God, he must be born again. You must put off your old self to be made new by the Spirit of God. You must put off this this flesh, this sinful flesh that separates us from God and you must be raised to new life by the Spirit of God, surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. So I call you tonight is repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is how we receive this forgiveness that Jesus Christ offers through his death, burial, and resurrection. Today is the day of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. So that was Andrew. He was just He's just gotten done sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Mike is going to get up there and start preaching. And after him, Lord willing, I'll be preaching as well. It's interesting to see the different kinds of people that are out here on the streets. When we come out, there's all sorts of different kinds of people. We just had a lesbian couple that walked by, arm in arm. Actually, one of them looked like she might have been stoned. They're actually walking down the street now. There's lots of sorts of different people, but we love everybody the same. The message is true and sure and steadfast. Whether we're preaching the gospel to the lesbians or homosexuals or fornicators or adulterers or thieves or liars or drunkards, extortioners, the message is the same, calling men to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So glad that Regeneration precedes faith. This is not just a reformed doctrine of the faith, but that is clearly what Scripture teaches, that salvation is of the Lord from start to finish. And we know that who Jesus saves is who Jesus keeps. There is the doctrine of election. There is the everlasting covenant that is unchanging, unwavering. God's word is immutable. We know that his word is true and never returns void. And in that, we're so thankful. A person wants to know whether they're truly saved. If a person really wants to know if they have eternal security, just look to Jesus and live. You know, who he calls, he, he saves. He's chosen, foreordained, he's called, he's justified and glorified those who are in Christ Jesus. What a glorious truth of the gospel. So we have somebody else coming up here. Let's see what's going on here. As Mike's talking about a little bit, he's talking about whether a person is good or not out here. And we know that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the common man walking the streets of St. Petersburg or most anywhere around the world, 
one thing they have in common. Most everybody thinks that they are relatively a good person. When we examine yourself against the righteousness of Christ, a person who is called of God knows that their righteousness is as filthy rags. They have nothing to offer God but their sin. So thankful that God not only saves us from our sin, but saves us from the penalty of sin and the love and pleasure of sin saves us from the power of sin and ultimately from the very presence of sin. What a glorious reality it is for those who are in Christ Jesus that one day we will no longer have to struggle with this flesh and the sins that so easily beset us. What a joy it is to know that there is victory in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Again, this is a live streaming video on EO Ministries on Facebook. But this is a supplement to the main video there. You see in the camera there, we're actually recording on a new audio device and video device. The picture quality and audio quality is much better. We're hoping to improve on that. We're not really tech savvy people, but we're looking to make as many improvements as we can as the time goes on. thinks he knows better than God. That's right. My friends, I tell you the word, salvation, the grace of God brings salvation. The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people. You know what? Like that man over there, the word of God says, like that man over there, it says here, for we were, uh, for we ourselves were once foolish, like that man, and disobedient, like that guy, led astray and slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. My friends, that is the testimony of every Christian. This is what our lives were like. If this is what your life is like now, are you so full of hatred? Are you so full of, of lusts and passions? Are you enslaved to your passions? Are you enslaved to your pleasures? Are you enslaved to these things? Are you foolish and disobedient? Are you led astray? Or are you being led of God? Is Jesus Christ the suffering of your soul? Or are you lost? Know this. This, was, this is the testimony of every Christian. That was our lives, but when the goodness and living kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us. He saved us. Our lives have gone on a totally different direction. Our life is devoted to my sin. My life is devoted to all the sin I was to. My hatred, my lying, my lusting, my my anger, my adult, my adultery in the heart, my my coveting. By lying, all of that, I was enslaved to it all. You name the sin, in one form or another, I was a slave to it. I could not forsake it, I could not turn away from it. No matter how hard I tried, it held me very tight. I could not be set free from its grip. But the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all kinds of people. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter your social class. What matters is a broken and contrite heart. The Lord will not turn away. For all who draw near to God through Jesus Christ will be saved. My friends, 
God is a gracious and merciful Savior. All God here, God our Savior, Jesus Christ our God is Savior. There's a fellow on the moped that we see every time we come out. It's kind of, kind of hilarious. to get right with God, sinner. So you have such hate you got a potty mouth. No Shows us you got a wicked heart. To Need to get right with God, sinner.
Today is the day of salvation, ma'am. Turn to Jesus and live. Many women see our sign, Abortion, America's Holocaust, and it really gets under their skin for some reason. I can't help but to know that this is the result of people whose consciences are bothering them in one way or another. Very thankful that God's given us all a conscience. Very sad, though, for those people whose consciences are seared due to their sin and depravity. They're hoping our prayer that people would be stirred up to really think about their lives. To think about issues of life and death, ultimately to turn to Jesus and live. Think about all the older people that are walking by and seeing the work of the ministry tonight and hearing the gospel. Like anybody, we never know how much time we have left, but it does seem as though people that have lived this life for such a long time, I would hope that they would hear the message and that God would open their eyes to the truth of his word, that they'd be saved. It's amazing to see how many people turn away tracks it's not just tracks, it's the message of the gospel that we're trying to share with people. A lot of people that don't have any time for the message of the gospel, they have time for everything else but the Lord. It's our hope and prayer that even if there's one person out here tonight that hears the truth, that God would change their life forever. It's also our hope and prayer that if there's any saints out here, any people that truly know the Lord, we hope that they would be inspired and encouraged is stirred up to get out and share the gospel themselves. Here's an officer, St. Pete police officer on horseback. We're hoping that people tonight would know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay. All right, so we have an officer in the car. We have an officer on horseback. Hopefully there wasn't a noise complaint. Our volume has been way down tonight. Way down tonight. It'll be interesting to see what they're going to do. Looks like we're drawing the attention of the police. We had a, for a time, we were actually were doing really well and it didn't have any problems with them. Now all of a sudden it just seems as though we're having more and more times in which they're coming out on calls. And it's amazing, we're not out here doing anything, we're not getting in trouble, we're not doing anything bad, we're not doing anything other than what we're called to do. This is a religious exercise according to the city ordinance and it's a joy to be faithful to the Lord. We're hoping that we'll be all right, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It looks like they're 
keeping an eye on us. Let's see what happens here. Another officer coming. Do you know Jesus? And more importantly, does he know you? If you know Jesus, you hear the voice of Christ, the word of God, and you respond by following him. Because it really is amazing how some of the community will tolerate raucous heavy metal music on the street corner that's often out here. And yet when it's the message of the gospel, they got an issue, they got a problem. It's really not the noise level, it's the message. And that is so true. Nothing will stop the message. We've been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ the Lord. And that's exactly what we're going to do. With God's help and for his glory. I want you to know that life. I want you to know Christ who can make all the difference in your life. Who can make the difference in your eternity. My friends, we love and care enough about you to tell you the truth. We love and care about you enough to warn you, to flee from the wrath of God to come. So there are, let me see, three cruisers that have come. Three cruisers have come and one on a horseback so far. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him in baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Do you know this new life? Do you know this death? Do you know this Resurrection of the Jesus. soul that occurs when one is united Even with Jesus. Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. If you claim to be a Christian today, if you claim to be a Christian today, and yet your life has not been changed, and yet you have not changed course, and yet he himself is not your chief affection, you are not a Christian. Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. Is the fruit of your life are you bearing fruit in keeping with repentance? Do you have the fruit of faith? Do you have the fruit of peace? Do you have the fruit of holiness in your life? My friends, I tell you the truth, there are many people who have lots of leaves of religion, lots of leaves of morality, but it does not come from a heart made new. Examine yourself today. If your conscience has been awakened to the God of God, your conscience has been awakened to God's wrath and the dread of it, then plead to Christ, who is the Savior of the world. You might be saying to yourself that I'm too bad of a sinner. You might be saying to yourself that, oh, God's grace can't save someone like me. That's the exact kind of people that Jesus came to save. He came to save the worst of the worst. He didn't come to call the righteous. He didn't come to call the, quote, godly or the good. He came to call the sinner. It's the amazing godly. to me that people will tolerate the Black Lives Matter and all the other groups that are going on out there. But when it comes to Christians preaching the gospel, people get heartburn over it. You must repent. That really does astonish me, but it shows how far America has fallen. Very sad, but that's why we're out here. We want to be a light in this dark world. Jesus has called us to be salt and light, and that's exactly what we're doing tonight, and that's exactly what we're going to continue to do. All for the glory of God. Yes, some ladies over there are saying amen and affirmation to what we're speaking about. which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. 
Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in, in knowledge as in the image of its creator. My friends, is this your story? Have you put away the deeds of darkness in your life? Are you ruled by anger, wrath, or malice? Does obscene talk come out of your mouth? Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you talk about is what you talk about. What comes out of your mouth, that is what is in your heart. Does truth, love, righteousness, does that come out of your mouth? Or anger, wrath, and obscene talk? On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. It, is your life is your life devoted to Christ? Is your life one with God? Or are you one who is enslaved to your sin? You might be thinking to yourself, Oh, I'm as free as can be. I do what I want and I do what I please. I dare you to go one day without sinning. I bet you can't do it even for one hour or one minute. My friends, I tell you the truth, you are a slave to your sin unless Christ sets you free. And when the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. This is the difference between sinning and living in sin. Do you love God with everything? Do you love God oh, with yeah. every fiber of your being? If not, you've broken the greatest commandment. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? If not, then you've broken the second greatest commandment. Those are the two greatest commandments, the two greatest offenses you could commit. If you're honest with yourself, you know you have broken God's law. And his law will not be spurned. It will call all records into account. And for those who believe on the Lord Jesus, his final words on the cross are for you. Paid in full, cook cross die. It is finished. This is the good news of the gospel, my friends, that he takes our 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 bill of death, and he nails it on the cross, never to be seen again. He takes it to the grave, never to be seen again. He rises from the grave, and our debt, our sin, is never to be seen again. He takes our sin, our iniquity, our debt before God, and casts it as a bird to the sea, never to be seen again. This is the good news of the gospel. We're looking at the Bible. What? Are you reading the Bible? Yes. All right. So the guy comes along and says, are you reading out of the Bible? Are you reading out of the Bible? And Mike says, yes. He said, okay, good. time is it? Uh, 7.50. 7.50? Okay. Yeah. We need somebody. Listen, don't give me the business. I can hold it if you want. Or... I guess. Uh, you want to hold it? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, 
Mr. Don Fursell is up next. Your soul from sin, from death, hell, and destruction. You 
see, apart from Christ Jesus, the Lord, we have no hope in this world. Apart from Jesus Christ, the Lord, we have absolutely no hope in this world. Jesus came into the world some thousand, some 2,000 years ago to save sinners just like you and I. He could have left each and every one of us in our sin, destined for hellfire, and he'd be justified in doing so. There's none of us deserved that deserve the grace and mercy of God. We're born as creatures of wrath, and that's where we belong. We belong as creatures of wrath, because this is what our, our sin produces. This is what our sin brings about. Our sin is a reproach against the holy God. Our sin is a violation of the law of God and the word of God. We have a knowledge of, of sin by the law. God is gracious in showing us and telling us what his law is. He could have left us alone and been justified in doing so. But he, he determined in the course of time to establish a covenant with his people, his chosen people. The question is, do you know the Lord Jesus tonight? We've been saying he would have been justified in leaving each and every one of us to die a criminal's death. And yet God in his grace and his mercy is saving a remnant. Are you part of the remnant? Do you know the Lord Jesus tonight? Do you hear the word of truth? Do you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ? There's many people out here tonight that have eyes to see, but they don't see the things of God. They have ears to hear, but they don't hear the things of God. They're going about their business, living their life, living it up, having no idea, no concept of eternity, no concept of their relationship with God and whether or not they're pleasing to God. We need to have a consciousness about the things of God. It's only our sin that separates us from God. The only way we can be reconciled to God and be made right with God is to believe in the Lord Jesus. Christ is with <laughs> according to God's word is death. That's quite plain and simple. It's death. That is the punishment for our sin according to the law of God, which says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. There's a twofold reality in that. You see that the wages, what we earn as a result of our sin is death. That's something that we deserve because of we are lawbreakers. We're born with a, a sin nature that defies God, that rebels against God, that hates the things of God. The natural man does not understand or know the things of be of God. It's only when God comes and commands his light to shine through the darkness that a man is able to see the Lord for the first time and cry out to him in the faith that comes from Christ. It's not our faith that saves us. It's the faith of Christ. It's important to know that. It's the faith of Christ, it's the faith of Christ. Regeneration precedes faith. Every person that comes to faith in Christ Jesus, the Lord, is a miracle of Almighty God. Many people in the world today don't believe in miracles, but let me tell you, every time a person, a hell-bound, hell-deserving sinner, comes to faith in Jesus Christ, that is a miracle of God. Jesus says you must. Born again. He must be born again. That is not a maybe, that is a reality if you are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see, there's coming a day when God is going to judge the world in righteousness by that man which he hath ordained. That man is none other than Jesus Christ the Lord. On the last day, the books are going to be opened and God's going to judge you according to his word. 
According to your works, where will you stand on Judgment Day when the books are open? Where will you stand for before God and give an account for yourself? What will you say to God who you have offended? What will be your plea when you are in the courtroom of God standing at trial and your life is examined? I'll tell you, my friends, the best thing to do is to sell your case outside of court. I don't know if anybody's been to court before we have. And one of the things that's always good is to try to settle your case outside of court if you can. Now, in this case, when we're talking about this case that has brought against the sinner, just like you and I, the only way for us to settle our case that God has against us in court, you must be born again. That's the only way. That's the terms. See, we as Americans don't like to be told what to do a whole lot. We like to have it our own way, it's just like the Burger King model. We don't want to have anybody coming along and telling us what to do. But it's not just anybody that's telling us that you must be born again. It's the Lord Jesus himself who is God. When you read the Bible, you find out that Jesus is God. Great Jesus reveals his deity all throughout Scripture. When you, read, when you see the life of Jesus, this miracle-working Savior, Jesus means Savior. When you see the miracle-working work of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know that he's revealing to us who he is. He's showing us clearly that, that he is the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Word that was made flesh among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of God, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When we see Jesus, we see the Son of God, we see the King of all kings, and the Lord of all Lord Jesus himself has received a kingdom. He's received the kingdom, you see. It is amazing that King Jesus was anointed for the work of the ministry at his baptism. He went out from the baptism. He lived a sinless life, a spotless life for our righteousness. That's right. It's amazing what happened on the cross. Oh, hey, I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Oh. How That's many people terrible. really know what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary? Many of us know a, a few little facts about the cross. Many of us know that the Roman cross was the, the most cruel of intentions. It was a cross that was very cruel, very wicked. It was very painful. It was something that was very barbaric. It was developed by the Romans, and even before that, the Phoenicians. It was a very cruel punishment that was meant to inflict as much pain as possible. When we think about the cross of Jesus Christ the Lord and the, the pain and the suffering that he endured on the cross, you get a picture of how God looks at our sin. That's right, when you think about the, the crown of thorns nope. that was placed on Jesus, when you think about the whips that scourged him on his back, when you think about every drop of the spit that was spit on him, when every slap to the face and slap to the body, and he was punched, he was ridiculed, he was mocked. Ultimately, even on the cross, there was a sword that pierced his side and blood and water poured out. When you look at what Jesus did, what Jesus endured, you get a glimpse of how God looks at our sin. That's right, this is the punishment of sin. He didn't have any sin of himself. The Lord Jesus didn't have any sin of himself. He's sinless. He's a sinless, spotless lamb of God. In fact, under the law of God, we learned that just not any sacrifice would do. When we look at the sacrificial system under the Old Covenant, we see the sacrificial system that was established under the law for the nation of Israel and peculiar people, a chosen generation, a nation that was chosen by God himself. We see this sacrificial system that foreshadows the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. And that sacrifice is Jesus Christ the Lord, he is the sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. When we examine the law of God, we find out that not just any sacrifice would do. You can't give God your leftovers. 
Many of us would think that we would just give God the leftovers, give God the spotted calf, give God the leftovers, the calves that are not doing very well, that are polluted. But under the law of God, they were forbidden to offer any animals that were polluted, any animals that were spotted. There was a precise requirement under the law. Anytime you approach holy God, you must bring a perfect sacrifice. Now, if you think about that for a minute, in spite of ourselves, what is it that enables a man to approach holy God and to worship him in spirit and in truth? We are painted with sin. We are corrupted. We're polluted. According to the law of God, we have nothing, nothing of any value to offer God in and of ourselves. We need to know that. We need to know that we have nothing to offer God in and of ourselves. There's yeah. nothing. Thank you. Okay. In ourselves, it's not spotted or jaded with this sin that's so, it's so prevalent in our lives. We need to know that we are just broken vessels. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all messed up. We have nothing to offer God in and of ourselves but our sin. But we see Jesus, who died as a substitutionary in common, and offering a sacrifice in a place of sinners. We couldn't offer ourselves. We had nothing to offer ourselves. There's nothing that we could give God is worth anything. We're all jaded, we're all polluted, we're all stained with sin. That's why when you stand before God on Judgment Day, there's nothing to offer God. On Judgment Day, there's nothing that you can give God to appease Him. Of His wrath. God hates sin. The Bible even says that God hates all the workers of iniquity. We need to know that. We have nothing to offer God but our sin. If we're trying to Excuse our sin, there's nothing that we have no excuse. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none of us that are righteous apart from Jesus. All of our righteousness are as filthy rags. Many people think that on Judgment Day they're going to be just fine because they're a good person. But when you get to know the reality of God's word, you know that we all have sinned. We have nothing to offer God. We have nothing to offer God of any value. That's why we need Jesus. That's why Jesus died as a substitutionary atonement, mm. a sacrifice, an offering for our sin. He died in the place of another. He died in the place of every man, woman, and child who would but obey him, repenting of their sins and placing their faith and trust in him. The only way that you can repent of your sin and place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ the Lord you must be regenerated by the Spirit of God. It's God Himself that calls those things that are dead to life. Apart from Christ, we are dead in trespasses and sin. Without any hope in this world, apart from Jesus Christ, we have no life. We have no hope. We are as dead bones that are laying in the desert without no hope of salvation, no hope of life, no hope of a drink of water or anything. Apart from Christ, there are men, those fish, well, we need Jesus. We need a Savior. If you're out in the open water, you know that you're lost at sea. What's the first thing you look for? Many people look for a life raft. They look for a Savior. They look for somebody to come along to save them and to get them out of this predicament that they find themselves in. There's many instances in life where we get into trouble. We get, perhaps we're out to sea and we can't get back to shore. We're, Maybe we're at the beach and we get caught up into a current. There's many things that happen in life where people are lost in sea and lost in space and lost all over the world. What's the first thing that people want? They want a savior. They want a deliverer. They want somebody to help them, to rescue them, to be a hero. Let me tell you something. That somebody is Jesus. Jesus. You know, a lot of people, even the nation of Israel, looked at Jesus. They were looking for a conquering king that would come and destroy their enemies. And they did recognize Jesus when he came. He was meek and lowly, humble. He was unlike any other king that they ever known before. And yet we see that Jesus came to fulfill the will of God. 
the Father, there was a plan, the everlasting covenant, worked out in the Godhead before the foundation of the earth. God knew exactly what was going to happen in this world. There was a purpose, there was a plan. He knew from the very beginning who it is that would accept him and who it is that would reject him. It's amazing as we look at the Bible, we see a lot, we learn a, a lot about the God of all creation. It's amazing how the God of all creation is in the work of the, revealing himself and showing himself to us. We see God in the, his word, we understand the things of God when we read the Bible. We also see the handiwork of God when we examine the, this creation of his. Don't ever let anybody fool you thinking that this world was an accident. There's no way that you and I could ever be formed by a big bang, by accident, by evolution. We didn't come from monkeys. We are the creation of God. We are the handiwork of God. God was very specific in how he made all things. And in the end of creating the heavens and earth and all that exists, he says it is not only good, but it was very good. He made everything in six days and he rested on the seventh day. He rested on the seventh day. We can learn a lot from God. You see, he gave us the Sabbath to rest. A lot of us as Americans are too busy on the Sabbath. We're too busy in this world. We don't have time for the things of God. We're calling you tonight to reconsider your life. Reconsider what's important in life. Reconsider why it is you're here on this earth. Nobody's an accident. Nobody is an accident. There is a purpose, there is a plan, a reason why we're here. What is the meaning of your life? Why are you here? What is your purpose? What is it that God expects of you? The Bible says that God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Repent of your sin and place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ the Lord. So while Jesus came into the world, to save sinners just like you and I. He made a way of salvation, of reconciliation, of deliverance. He made a way that we could know God. You see, our sin is something that separates us from God. And as a result of this sin, we have no right, no claim to the kingdom of God. We have no right or claim to the things of God. It's only through Jesus that anybody has any hope of salvation. Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And even today, he commands all men everywhere to repent. Now, when he says all men everywhere needs to repent, God commands. We know that the authority of this message comes from God himself. Many people don't like to be told what to do, but you know what? The potter has power over the clay. And that's exactly what we are. We are clay in the hands of God. It's God that has formed us. It's God that has created us. It's God that created man in his own image and likeness with the express purpose that we would worship him in spirit and in truth. This is the God of all creation that commands all men everywhere to repent. Our sin separates us from God, but Jesus saved a sinner for the law of sin and death. If you're tired of being a slave to sin, then repent of your sin. Cry out to Jesus. He's the only Savior. He's the only deliverer. He's the only mediator between God and man. There is no other. All the other religions of this world are vain. They have nothing to offer you. Jesus saves. Jesus is alive. His every word is true. Get to know the God of the Bible. Get to know the God of the Bible. It's God himself that commands. He has the authority as the potter over the clay. He has the authority to determine and to define who we are. Now many people in America today have a problem understanding that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Somehow there is some gender confusion but know this, that gender confusion does not come from God. God is not confused. God is not confused. God knows exactly what he's done and why. God knows exactly why he made man and his own image and likeness. God knows
knows exactly why he created man and woman to come together in holy matrimony as husband and wife and to bring forth children. God knows exactly what the definition of marriage is and of family. We as Americans are living in a time when postmodernism tries to define what a man is and what a woman is and what marriage is. But know this, no matter what the government has to say, God's word is true. God's word is true. We know what a man is. We know what a woman is. God's word tells us who a man is and who a woman is. And it's high time that we stop listening to the wicked counsel of this word world. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. <clears throat> Think about this for a minute. We've listened to all the wrong people. We've listened to all the wrong people as Americans. We've listened to the Oprah Winfrey's of the world. we listened to the Bill Gates of the world. We've listened to the Donald Trumps of the world. we listened to all the wrong people. It's high time that we humble ourselves and cry out to Jesus, who is the Savior of the world. It's time that we stop listening to the wicked and start picking up the Word of God and reading it for ourselves and find out what God expects of you and what God expects of me. Today is the day of salvation. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And all oh, the hells, as we've been talking about, it's the God of all creation that commands all men everywhere to repent. And that is without exception. That is without exception. God has the authority to tell us what to do. Americans today don't want to be told what to do. We're too proud, too arrogant too haughty, too high-minded, too much of a lover of pleasure more than a lover of God. We as Americans have fallen away. We have turned our backs on God. It's high time that we have a change of heart. It's high time that we repent and rethink what's important in life. You see, we live a very short life in respect to eternity.
Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? And does Jesus know you? So many people, folks, have a knowledge of God. They have a head knowledge of the things of God. But they don't really know Jesus. They don't really know God. They have an idea of who God is. But they don't really know Him. The only way that you can know God is to be His children. To be His child. And the only way to be His child, you must be born again. That's the reality, folks. Postmodernism today in America tells us a lie, tells us that everything's going to work out in the end. Don't worry about it. Postmodernism today tells us that everybody's a child of God. That is a lie that's down in America today. Let me tell you something. You're not a child of God just because you're out here and you have hair in your lungs. We're sinners in the hands of an angry God. We need a Savior. No, this, you're not a child of God because you have air in your lungs. You're not a child of God because you're an American. You live in the United States of America. You're not a child of God because you think you're a child of God. Do you know Jesus? The only way to be a blood-bought child of God, you must be born again. This is the work of God in regeneration. If God is drawing you tonight, if you hear the word of truth and you believe the gospel, then don't put off till tomorrow what you can do tonight. Cry out to Jesus. 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 Cry out to him tonight. If you don't understand the things of God, cry out to Jesus. If you don't, if you don't, you don't know for sure if you were to die tonight, whether you'd be in the arms of Jesus in the glory of heaven, then cry out to Jesus. Cry out to him tonight and help, ask him to help you to understand. If you don't believe the gospel, ask Jesus to help you understand. Ask him to help your unbelief. Ask him to help you to understand the things that you don't understand. There's many of us that, that see through a glass darkly. There's many things in life that we don't understand. The question is, do you know Jesus? And does Jesus know you? Have you been born again? Jesus says you must be born again. And thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe the word of God to the point of obeying God and stepping out in faith? You look at all the examples in the word of God where Jesus, he healed the people that were sick, especially like the blind. You okay over there? You see a picture of what happens when a person comes to faith in Christ. You see many people that are blind know that they have a need of a Savior. They're humble. They're humble beggars. They're poor and spirit. They know that they need a Savior. They know that there's no hope in the world but Jesus. If you're blind tonight, you don't know Jesus. If you can't see him, cry out to him. He's the only one that can open your eyes. He's the only one that can open your ears. He's the only one that can open your understanding to know the things that, that be of God. Don't turn your eyes and your ears and your life away from God. If you hear the truth, take action tonight. Take action tonight. You must be born again. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to him tonight. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait to do tomorrow what you can do right here tonight. We're not ever promised another day. We're never promised another minute, another hour, another second, another day, another week. You must be born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The question is, do you believe in the Lord Jesus? I'll tell you, when the, the blind man's eyes were opened by Jesus, you could 
You can know one thing. He believed on the Lord Jesus. Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? He says, you are the Son of God. I believe that thou art the Son of God. That only happens when God opens our eyes. When God opens our eyes through regeneration, that precedes faith. When God opens our eyes, he enables us to see. And when we're able to see him, we're able to believe on him, to cry out to him, to have faith, to step out in obedience. One of the things we find with the blind man in John chapter 9, that when Jesus opened his eyes, the blind man, in this case, didn't ask Jesus to heal him, didn't ask Jesus to open his eyes. Jesus showed compassion on him, showed him mercy. He intervened in his life. He saw this man that was blind in desperate need of sight. Not only did he give him eyes to see, he saved him. He saved him. He delivered him from his sin. And this blind man, when his eyes were opened, he believed in the Lord Jesus. He knew that Jesus is the Son of God. He believed on him. He obeyed him. And the first act was he looked to Jesus for the first time and said, Lord. Lord, when you come to Jesus, when you truly know Jesus, you know that Jesus is Lord. And is that our response in knowing that Jesus is Lord? We worship Him. We worship Him. We worship God in spirit and in truth. That is the way it is, folks. It's the message of the gospel. There again, God could have left us in our sin. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for our sin is death. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. The only way that you can take part in this eternal life, you must be born again. You must know Jesus according to his word. If you believe in the Lord Jesus, you're blessed. You're blessed. If you don't know him tonight, you're under a curse, the curse of the law. If that does not concern you, it should. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You see, there's two peoples in the world. The people of the kingdom of God and the, and the children of this world. There's none other. We have a lot of kingdoms, a lot of nations in this world, but ultimately it boils down to two. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. The question is, what kingdom are you in? Are you in the kingdom of God? Do you know God? And does he know you? Or are you one of the kingdoms of this world which is ruled by Satan himself? Think about this. If you're tired of being a hill-bound, hell-deserving sinner, if you're tired of being a sinner, if you're tired of living in sin, if you're tired and you know that you have, have broken God's law and there's no way out for you, then turn to Jesus and confess your sin before him. It doesn't matter. What you've ever done, nobody out here tonight is going to be pointing our finger at anybody. We can't point our finger at anybody without having the finger pointed right back at us. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we all need Jesus. The question is, when you know that Jesus died as an atonement for sin, that he was buried and rose again on the third day, when you know that he commands all men everywhere to repent of their sin and to believe on him and to live for him, what will you do with the message of the gospel? Will you hear the gospel? Will you believe the gospel? Will you, will you turn to Jesus and live? Or will you continue in your rebellion and your defiance against God? Know this tonight, folks. If you hear the word of truth, believe the gospel. Cry out to Jesus tonight. There's no other way. There's no other way of salvation. There's no, no other way to enter the kingdom of God but through Jesus Christ the Lord. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This road is narrow. You see, in life, there's two roads, the narrow road and the wide road. The narrow road leads to heaven. The narrow road leads to the presence of God this glorious kingdom and yet that wide road is the wide road of destruction that most people out here tonight and around the world are on they're on that wide road 
of destruction that leads to hellfire and damnation for all of eternity. What a shame it is. What a shame it is that more people don't come to faith in Christ. You see, many times we're just so busy with our lives, we don't have any time for the things of God. We have time for everything else but God. May it never be. There's two commandments. We talked about the Ten Commandments earlier tonight. Jesus summed those two, Ten Commandments up into two. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. We need help. We need help. We need a deliverer. We need a savior. We need somebody to set us free. We need somebody to set our course straight. We've all shifted. We've all gone astray. We've all defied God. The only way out, the only <coughs> way for this broken vessel, this broken soul to be made right, be put back together according to the will of God, you must be a new man in Christ. When a man is biblically born again, the Bible says that many man be born in Christ. He is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know, there's a lot of people in America that, that say, you know, I really like what you have to say, but I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to follow Jesus. And I just know I start cleaning myself up. You know, I'm smoking too much, and I just can't. I, I want to stop smoking before I come to faith in Christ. I, I'm just drinking too much. I don't want to come to faith in Christ until I get a handle on that. And I stop drinking or fornicating or lying or stealing or whatever it might be. Know this, that there's no way that you can ever clean yourself up. That's a crap. That's a snare of the devil. There's no, many people are saying they'll never give their life to Jesus until they clean themselves up first. Because I wouldn't go to church. There's no way that you can clean yourself up apart from Christ. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. You need the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost in your life. You need the blood of Jesus to cleanse your heart. You need to be clothed in righteousness and to be a temple of the Holy Spirit in order for your life to change. Things to be made right. It's really amazing when you think about the gospel. When you think about what Jesus does to a, a lost sinner. You think about what Jesus does to that lost sinner. He not only saves him, but he forgives him. And his sin and his iniquity is never remembered anymore. When, when Jesus died and he was buried, no more. If you know Jesus, your sins were buried in that grave with Jesus, never to be seen again, never to be brought up again, never to be recounted again. When Jesus forgives you of your sin, you're cleansed from your sin, never to be brought up again. We don't have to be ashamed any longer when we're in the presence of the Lord. When we know Jesus according to his word, when we're biblically born again, we don't have to be ashamed. The only reason why any man is ashamed is because they're a sinner that needs Jesus. This world has lost its sin. This world is dark. This world has gone astray. The only way back is Jesus. The only way to the presence of God is Jesus. The only way to have your sins forgiven is through Jesus Christ the Lord. There's nobody in this world that you can confess your sins to and find true forgiveness of sin. That's not only in Jesus. He's the only one. He's the Savior of the world. He's the only one that can cleanse you of your sin, forgive you of your sin, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's the only one. He's the only one. No priest, no pope, no pastor will do. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Get to know the God of the Bible. Cry out to him tonight. When Jesus saves a soul from sin, it's forever. It's forever. Get to know the God of the Bible. You must be born again. And thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He must be born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Do you want me to just go ahead and finish it? Or close it up? Go ahead. If you would, let me give you this. Then you can say something and I'll say something and we'll close it out. Okay. Is that right? Uh, sure. Or or do you want to close it out? Lord Almighty says, thou shalt not commit adultery. As soon as I thought that in my mind, I know he's seen it. Because that's when Sunday school class blew up. She said, she said, she said, some people I would tell not even talk about it. Because they all hurt. And it's curious to me. They hurt. And I was like, I'm not in any case. Y'all are going to seal me in a suit. Now I know what kind of deal is. I've had some. Do you want to close it up? No, you can close it out. Yeah. Just for your opinion. Because the Holy Spirit has all the gifts. The Holy Spirit can turn into me to any gift that He wants to be. It's not that I can hold, but if He wants, if I'm yielded to the Holy Ghost, if, if I am yielded to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can prophesy. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can do gifts of signs of healing. He can do every gift if He chooses to use me. You know, it's like we want to do all things before. for the glory of God. We've had an exceptional night tonight. We have had a lot of a heckler, you know I mean? a lot of people that have come against us. I'm, I'm, We've had I'm the DSA team please come out tonight. The Holy they left us alone. Like We're thankful to God for that. We've had a you know wonderful, I mean? marvelous time tonight. And, uh, you know what I mean? and Jesus Andrew preached and said, who gave you something to eat? Mike preached and I just got done preaching and we had a very effective time during Christ and him crucified. So if you're this local community, we had a lot of people that were listening intently to the message. We even had a, well, they came along and was taking pictures of everybody, and I'm not sure what he's doing that for, but he seemed to be a very favorable in what we're doing. And you know what? I ain't seen a church. You know, even if one person comes to faith in Christ, it's worth it all. But you look up what love about the book. The Lord and all that we say and all that we do. Very thankful for Tyler, who was our event coordinator. Very thankful for all the work that he does and helped put this all together. Um, he's like our tech guy. He's like the guy that coordinates everything. And with any ministry, you need to have somebody that's devoted to that. And we're very thankful for him and his labor. He's the one that each time we get, get up and get ready to go, he's the one that gets us moving. Sometimes we don't, we're not real motivated. Sometimes we get tired and wore out. And he's the one that kind of kicks us a little bit, stirs us up, gets us motivated. We'll get a text from him and say, who's going street preaching tonight? He's the one that coordinates that we have all the water and that everything's set up when we go on trips. He's the one that, that, that coordinates our hotel reservations and makes sure that we have everything that we need. He's very effective in what he does. And we're very thankful for every member of this fellowship of saints with the Bankers and Outreach Ministries. But there's a reason, you know, when you go to church and you see a woman it's very important what's going on. You've got the devil in that church, so people that are in the limelight, but you know there's a lot of people behind the scenes that do a lot of hard work that we need everybody. Everybody has a part to play. And it's very important to have that in this church. And I don't care how many men of God you've got in there. We're very thankful for the privilege of being able to preach Christ and then crucified. Man, with Christ crucified, and in America, today, there's a lot of people that are in the church. We're very thankful for the privilege of being able to preach Christ and then crucified. Man, with Christ crucified, in America today, we don't know how long we're going to be able to do this, but as long as we have breath. In our lungs, we hope and pray that God would give us the strength to stand for Him and for His glory and to go out and to preach the gospel at every opportunity. You know, this world is really getting dark. As we talked about before, there's so much bad that's coming out here and sharing the gospel with people. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Christians that have built up an edifying position. There's a lot of people that hear the word of truth. I hope that I'm praying that people would really think about what we've said, what's happened here tonight, that they'd hear the word. 
than to be Come that because the word God says John Moses and they would say they're out to him. That's the only people that we're told to stay away from. Those that people out here in the real problem. Right now we're we're talking with we're not, brothers. We're not we're to be know, around a local here right. that we see. Right. But somebody week. that says they know Christ and they're not loving and sign off now and go back to the work tomorrow, but we got guys. I'm like, how can I? Well, it's okay to work on the uh, weekend okay. of our meetings. So it must be okay. You know what I'm saying? Does it line up with really, really, right. really right. right. For the work of the day, that's what most of the very effective time of fellowship and those that might not grow up with the faith. Anybody that knows the Lord Jesus that would like to come and fellowship with us, they would like to get a hold of us and talk to us. I got no promise to listen to a brother. A lot of people that get that government is but if the government is not submitted to God, what do they got to do? They can't, they don't know they're living in this world. When a president, you know, when you've got presidents up there that say it's okay for a man to be a man, a woman to be a woman, and everything that they're doing is not God, that's the one who's saying that. What's that list? What did they have? They just keep it. You know what I mean? Well, we're to submit to them. You know what? When they can't put that law on the right hand, all things that we do, we want to do for the glory of God. Are you going to do 